In this video, I'm going to explain how you can stop your joints, muscles, and bones from rotting. And if you're not rotting yet, I'm going to show you how you can prevent your joints, muscles, and bones, and the rest of your body from rotting. So we're going to focus on joints now because uh, there are far more conditions that affect joints than muscles. And so here is a, a, an image from a book that was published back in 1993 from a pretty famous guy, Salter. I guess Roger, Richard or Robert, any, anyway. Causes of arthritis. So this is not just osteoarthritis, which is the most common thing. And so uh, down below, I'll give you an example of how uncommon some of these things are, like ochronosis. Most people have no idea what ochronosis is. And you can see there's a good reason for that is because it's so rare, one in 19,000 people. So in small towns, no one will probably have it, uh, or just a couple. And so you can see uh, hemophilia causing blood in the joint that leads to uh, arthritis. So again, a very, you know, these are very rare con conditions. So you can have infections in joints, again, rare. I mean, how often do people get tuberculosis these days and they get arthritis as a consequence? Pr pretty rare. So on, on the bottom, what I have outlined in the, in the red, sort of almost a full box, are causes that will lead to uh, osteoarthritis. And so you can see down below here, slipped uh, capital femoral epiphys epiphysis. This is something that happens in young people before the age of 15. Also very rare, one in 10,000. So very, not very common. So what most healthcare practitioners are taught is that trauma does, and you have to look here, major trauma is the issue. Minor little tweaks don't do it, although people think that because uh, the major cause of osteoarthritis is not, is not properly un understood. So I'm going to leave this slide now and just go to the next one, but trauma or wear and tear is another, is another one. People think that wear and tear equals trauma, and it doesn't really work that way. I'll show you in a couple seconds how and why. So this was published in 2016. You can see it's an open uh, journal about, rheum about uh, rheumatic and musculoskeletal d diseases. You can see what it says post-traumatic arthritis, PTA, post-traumatic arthritis. Only about 12% of all cases of OA are due to trauma. And this trauma is not insignificant. So these minor tweaks, as, as I said before, hardly likely to be a cause of arthritis. But uh, what we can look down in, uh, on the key messages and say, what does this study add? Inflammation occurring immediately after joint injury plays a key role in the onset of chronic post-traumatic arthritis. So if you have a legitimate trauma to a joint, it should heal within three months. If it's still present after six months, it's because you now have a chronic post-traumatic arthritis driven by inflammation. So inflammation shows up even in uh, traumatic arthritis because it's usually short-lived. So what are we told that might be useful if you have a legit joint injury? Early local, so topical uh, anti-inflammatory therapy might be an effective measure. So you're looking here at 12%. Now all those other causes you saw like one in 10,000, one in 19,000, maybe there are 15,000 cases or 15% 15 of all cases of osteoarthritis are caused by the things in the previous image. So that leaves 85% of osteoarthritic cases that are not properly understood, and these typically manifest in the aging population. Vague aches and pains start to develop for people in their 40s that kind of just nags along and gets worse. And by the time they're 60, they got a whole bunch of joints that hurt. That is the most common. That's 85% of all cases of osteoarthritis. And you certainly don't want that because over 60 is a little more difficult to move around anyway for the average person. You throw some nasty arthritis in there and it becomes very, very troublesome. So if we look at the driver of this, now you saw before metabolic OA where ochronosis and gout were there. Well, you can see here metabolic osteoarthritis that they're referring to in this article from 2012 is due to the metabolic syndrome or metabolic syndrome chemistry. So in this paper that was published in 2012, the authors state, uh, we nominate metabolic osteoarthritis as the fifth component of the metabolic syndrome. So metabolic syndrome is diagnosed by having at least three of the 
following five markers present. So you do a fasting blood test and measure glucose, triglycerides, and HDL cholesterol. If they're elevated, um, you sat, that satisfies a criteria for the metabolic syndrome. And then blood pressure, above 130 over 85, which is very common. And then a waist circumference for, this right around the umbilicus, the belly button, or inch above, inch below, 40 inches, over 40 inches for men, and over 35 inches for women. So if you look at the total population over the age of 18, that's about 25% of the total population. Once you reach 60, between 40 and 45%, maybe more, maybe less, depending upon the population, has this. But two out of five, just to pick a number and, and so we can visualize it, two out of five people over the age of 60, or 60 and older, have metabolic syndrome, which can then lead to osteoarthritis with zero injury occurring in the joint. So I'm not going to read through this, but it, it, it would be worthwhile to pause this video and just read through this so you can see that this is all the stuff that I talk about in my various books. So when we think about osteoarthritis in the average person, and you're looking at typically over 60 is where it becomes most obvious and marked. Um, we have to think about the nature, you know, joint anatomy to kind of get a baseline. So this is what a normal joint, or at least the bottom half of a joint, would look like. So the joint cartilage and bone would also be on the top. So that's, that's not there. So the joint space contains a fluid, lubricating fluid, and also helps to reduce friction uh, between the top and the bottom. They hardly ever touch, really. And if they do, it's just minor issues because... Your joint cartilage itself is 70%, that's a 70% water. Now, keeping the fluid within the joint space is going to be what's called the synovium and then the outer joint capsule. So this is what a normal uh, joint looks like. And so the average person who is 60 and thinks that they have or has osteoarthritis, their perception is, because they're typically given anti-inflammatory drugs, their perception is that they just have normal, a normal body, maybe a little bit of extra body fat, but a normal body, and they just need something to reduce their inflammation. So they take NSAIDs, and they keep on living their pro-inflammatory lifestyle, and of course, it never really gets any better. So what is the proper conceptualization for a normal healthy joint versus a rotting metabolic osteoarthritis joint? And this is what it looks like. And these are all images from my new book about how to stop your body from rotting. So on the left side, you can see a deflamed joint, beautiful looking. And here's a rotting joint with this nasty look here. So when, when physicians were originally trained to look at this, they, they were conditioned to believe that this somehow was due to wear and tear or minor trauma. And that is almost impossible. It has to be a major trauma. And remember, 85% of all osteoarthritis is not due to trauma. So how should we look at it? Well, before I mention that, Metabolic syndrome is a driver, so how would this be the case? So the metabolic syndrome is measured. I only have one metabolic syndrome marker here, hyperglycemia. Uh, and remember, you'd have high triglycerides and then low HDL. So when you have hyperglycemia, high blood glucose, it gets into all tissues and cells and creates an inflammatory reaction. Part of that is due to the induction of cytokine release and cytokines as well as glucose, help to activate these enzymes that digest. They start to digest the connective tissue, the cartilage. What else drives uh, this metabolic OA? With or without metabolic syndrome, as long as these factors are, are, are present, uh, you've got uh, a, a metabolic osteoarthritic situation. The overconsumption of omega-6 fatty acids, they become deposited as lipid in the joint tissue itself. And the same omega-6 fatty acids lead to the production of pro-inflammatory prostaglandins that cause pain. Now, cholesterol is also an issue for osteoarthritis, but the real issue is the oxidized cholesterol, not regular uh, oxidized LDL cholesterol, not regular LDL. Regular LDL cholesterol has no pathogenic p potential. It must be oxidized. This is a very, very w well-known fact. Free radicals, most people I've heard of, they, they drive joint degradation. All these factors, AGEs, 
free radicals, ox oxidized LDL, omega-6 fatty acids, hyperglycemia, endotoxin from a, a uh, gingival periodontal disease mouth or an inflamed gut is going to stimulate metalloproteinases and cytokines to basically degenerate the joint. Now, I mentioned before AGEs. This stands for advanced glycation end products. If you have metabolic syndrome or diabetes, you know what your A1C level should be. It should be below 5.7. Uh, AGE stands for advanced glycation end products, and that is what A1C is called, hemoglobin A1C, or glycated or glycosylated hemoglobin. So this is what osteoarthritis is in 85% probably of the population. There's also an infiltration within the joint of pro-inflammatory immune cells that do not drive healing, they perpetuate inflammation. So as long as these factors are present, uh, there's minimal chance of taking supplements like glucosamine or ginger will have any effect if these factors here are too robust. So when we, when I mentioned before about fat uh, depositing in joints, it's almost like hard to believe. The average person would never think that because very few clinicians think about uh, tissues like bone and joints to harbor fat, but in fact, this is very, very well known. So we're going to take a quick detour and I'll show you to demonstrate that it's absolutely true. So this paper was published in 2011, and you can see the title, Lipid Metabolism and Osteoarthritis. So I'm gonna blow this up right here. Well, you can see here, so just do first, I'm gonna to get to adipokines later. Second, cholesterol. We already talked about the oxidized LDL cholesterol. That is the issue. And then third, lipid deposition, deposition in the joint. There it is. Lipid deposition in the joint is observed at the early stages of osteoarthritis, before the occurrence of histological changes. So what, is, what does histological changes mean? Well, it, it means this. You can see these anatomical changes. Those are histological changes. So long before this happens, you end up with fat deposition in the joint, and that helps to be an initiator and a perpetuator of the degradation process. So uh, moving a little further to talk about the adipokines, so here you can see first adipokines. So adipokines, adipo refers to adipose tissue. So our fat mass. And so our fat, our fat cells and the immune cells that live in fat tissue are release chemicals called adipokines. And look what they do. Key regulators of OA pathogenesis. People have historically misperceived the obesity issue as a cause of joint compression, and that's why it is it really much more correlated to the pro-inflammatory chemistry of obese adipose tissue, which I'll show you in a moment. So this is an image from the, uh, the new Deflame Diet book on, on joint rotting and muscle rotting. I also put this image in the, uh, the Deflame Diet for breast health and cancer prevention. So when you have Lean deflamed adipose tissue. It is made up of fat cells that are lean and healthy, and then anti inflammatory T regulatory cells, anti inflammatory M2 macrophages, and anti inflammatory T helper 2 cells. If you've never heard of these before, it's no big deal. You should just know that lean deflamed adipose tissue pumps out lots of anti inflammatory adiponectin. So the adiponectin in circulation in lean, healthy people is about 1,000 times greater than the pro-inflammatory cytokines that I mentioned previously, and I'll show you in, uh, in this next image. And so your, your anti-inflammatory immune cells, they pump out anti-inflammatory healing cytokines. The most famous is interleukin-10. The production of interleukin-10 and adiponectin essentially disappears when we become obese. Goodbye. So you can see over here, there are no more within this fat mass. The T regs are gone, M2s are gone, and T helper 2s are gone. They've been replaced by T helper 1s, T helper 17s, all pro inflammatory. It does not matter if you don't understand them, just know that there is a replacement of anti inflammatory immune cells with pro inflammatory immune cells. And those that will be most noticeable 
from someone who took a decent biology class where they talked about the immune system and all would be natural killer cells and cyto cytotoxic T cells. They only show up uh, if there is a viral infection or cancer. So you need to think about that in the context of what obesity, how obesity is perceived by the immune system. Now, helper ones, you see here TH1s and TH17s, these guys show up uh, for lots of conditions, but autoimmune disease. And here again are your pro-inflammatory M1 macrophages. Now, look what happens. So I colorized the obese adipocytes, the obese fat cells, and you can see they're big. They crowd each other. Blood supply is poor. There's some hypoxia that occurs there. And then because it's so big, these cells don't go through proper recycling. And so as opposed to going through what's called normal apoptosis, a normal turnover of cells, these cells go through a necrotic process. So that is a perfect example of why I called my new book about rotting, biologic rotting. Necrosis is biologic rotting. And the degradation that you saw before in that joint image, that is more rotting. So what percentage of, of Americans live in this perpetual obesity rot state? Now remember the previous thing I told you about was how adipokines are involved. Well, here are your pro-inflammatory cytokines. These are also called adipokines. And these guys all lead to joint, muscle, bone, body degeneration, and biologic rotting. So how bad is this in America? Well, this comes from the CDC, and they got it from this behavioral risk factor surveillance system that the CDC has been doing for a while. And you can see back in 1990, compared to 2000, and 2010, they're looking at the rise of obesity. So down here, this dark blue, which you see right here, represents 15 to 19%, which means back in 1990, less than 15% of the U.S. population was obese. So these white states, so you have Arkansas, Kansas, Colorado, and Nevada. Um, is that right? Or no, Wyoming, sorry. Wyoming's up top here. Here's Colorado. Um, they, there was no data for them. So all the other states were reporting, and you can see many states less than 10%, but the majority were between 10 and 14%. By the year 2000, you can look and see that it started to hit 20 to 24% in almost half the states. And by 2010, multiple states had over 30% of the population obese. Well, what about now? Back to the CDC. And here you can see, you can pause for yourself and look at it. You can see green with the dot, dot, dot. I wasn't able to find any of them anywhere in here. All I can see is 20 to 25%, which would be in the District of Columbia, in Colorado, and down in Hawaii. So Puerto Rico was 30 to 35%. Guam, GU, is going to be 20 to 35%, 20 to 30%. And you can see... Uh, Alaska and all the other states in yellow, 25, 30%. And then we have state, many states with over 35%. OB. So they're rotting. The American population is literally rotting. And that's difficult to conceptualize. So people always want to do like, what should I eat? And that's why I wrote this first book to describe how our diet can create inflammation. In this book, I mentioned a Mo, uh, many con con conditions in this chapter 10, the big deflaming idea, but didn't talk about them specific. I talked about specific food issues in this book. It's about 250, 60 pages long. Now, my most recent book is this one, uh, The Deflame Diet to Stop Your Joints, Muscles, Bones, and Bones from Rotting. And it's not just that. We talk about the rotting of body fat, the rotting of arteries, joints, muscles, tendons, bones, spinal disc, and nervous system. The outcome is chronic degeneration and pain, heart attacks, and depression. So if you look through the table of contents for both books, you can see that this book focuses on multiple different conditions. So here's obesity and how it rots the body, metabolic syndrome, atherosclerosis, muscle rot that occurs, in people who are overweight with metabolic syndrome and diabetes, osteoarthritis, tendinosis, disc herniation, osteoporosis, chronic pain and depression, an introductory information about autoimmune diseases, the opioid crisis. So this book shows how the pro-inflammatory diet leads to brutal body rot. So this is the fourth book I've put together. So you can see right here on my author page 
at Amazon. So this is the most recent book. If you want to get volumes of this book, just single copies, go right to Amazon. You can get it uh, as, as a paperback or a Kindle. If you would like to get volumes, uh, volume discounts are available here. If you click this cart just like this and it says 17 one book, just a click right here will take you right to Amazon. If you hit the this thing here, I forget what it's called, you will get two buying options, 25 books or 50 books, and then the discount price for there. If you read this book, you will very much look at how your diet affects your body in a very different way because I show clearly how too many of these calories causes all of these important tissues that allow us to get around to literally rot. And we don't want that. So it's very important to conceptualize chronic inflammation as a rotting body. And if you look at it from that perspective, it'll be much easier to understand the nature of chronic inflammation because many people will take anti-inflammatory supplements and drugs and not get the relief they're looking for. And that is why, because these people are literally rotting. And if you catch it before it gets too bad, you can turn the rot off and regenerate yourself. So check out these books at deflame.com and on Amazon for more information.